This 2x2 table template should be familiar to you from module 11. I've added the equation for prevalence at the bottom right. You learned about and had practiced calculating positive predictive values and negative predictive values last week in class. The predictive value of a test is not a property of the test alone. It's determined by sensitivity, specificity and the prevalence of disease in the population being tested. We'll spend more time on the subject of prevalence in module 12. Because predictive value is influenced by prevalence, it's not independent of the setting in which the test is used. Positive results, even for a very specific test, when applied to patients with a low likelihood of having the disease, are likely to be false positives. Similarly, negative results, even for a very sensitive test, when applied to patients with a high chance of having the disease, are likely to be false negatives. So in other words, the interpretation of positive or negative medical test results varies from setting to setting according to the prevalence of disease. It might not be intuitively obvious why prevalence should affect the interpretation of a test result, so it might help to consider how a test would perform at the extremes of prevalence. Remember, no matter how sensitive or specific a test might be, there will still be a small population of patients who are misclassified by it. Imagine a population in which no one has the disease. In such a group, all positive test results, even for a very specific test, will be false positives. Therefore, as the prevalence of a disease approaches zero, the positive predictive value of a test also approaches zero. In contrast to this, if everyone in a population tested has the disease, all negative test results will be false negatives, even for a very sensitive test. As prevalence approaches 100%, negative predictive value approaches zero. This figure illustrates the effect of prevalence and positive predictive value for a test at different but generally high levels of sensitivity and specificity. When the prevalence of the disease in the population tested is relatively high, the test performs well. But at lower prevalences, the positive predictive value drops to nearly zero and the test is virtually useless. Notice that as sensitivity and specificity fall, the influence of prevalence on predictive value becomes more pronounced. Prevalence is usually more important than sensitivity and specificity in determining predictive value. One reason why this is so is that prevalence can vary over a much wider range. Prevalence of a disease can vary from 1 in 1 million to less than 1 in 10, depending on the age, gender, risk factors and clinical findings of the patient. In contrast, Sensitivity and specificity of diagnostic tests usually vary over a much narrower range, from about 50 to 99%. So the take home message is that diagnostic tests work best when used for patients with a high likelihood of disease.